Welcome to Looking at the Markets with David Modell. Today we're going to talk about stochastics versus RSI, a technical indicator showdown. So we're going to compare and contrast these two very popular technical indicators. So here we go. The stochastic oscillator developed in the 1950s by George Lane, and there he is, the man himself, George Lane. The stochastic oscillator is a momentum indicator that looks and behaves somewhat like the RSI, or Relative Strength Index. Like the RSI, the stochastic oscillator is often used at a default 14 period setting. Also like the RSI, the stochastic oscillator is range bound and can help to determine overbought and oversold price levels. Traditionally, stochastics would interpret over 80 as overbought and under 20 as oversold, while RSI would traditionally interpret over 70 as overbought and under 30 as oversold. So let's look at an example. We're going to use Apple for this example. And uh, I put both the slow and fast stochastics here. Here are the slow stochastics and the fast stochastics, as well as the 14 period RSI here. In fact, they're all 14 period and they're all on their traditional settings. And this is a daily candlestick chart for Apple. All right. So let's, and, and this is all courtesy of stockcharts.com, which, uh, as of today is free to use for these charts that I use. And so it's a, it's a great website. You know, I, I like to use it a lot. All right. So now notice Apple uh, had some very nice bullish price action here, but there was a, there was a downtrend and then boom, an earnings miss back in late April. All right. Now, also over here recently in late July, there was an earnings beat, good earnings numbers. And so zip went straight up. So let's take a look at how the slow and fast stochastics, as well as the RSI, reacted to these price changes. Well, notice that here, when Apple went down moderately, this was before the earnings miss. The earnings miss is here when it went down a lot in one day and then went down some more in the following days. But in the days when it just went down somewhat, notice that the slow and fast stochastics went down sharply even, even before the earnings miss. This is corresponding to the moderate price decline. It went from all the way up here to all the way down here very quickly. And that's on the slow, slow stochastics. On the fast stochastics, it went down even more sharply from an even higher place to a very low place. And notice that the, the angle is even sharper here than here. So you'll notice that the Slow stochastics are a little bit less extreme and a little bit more smoothed out, less jerky than the fast stochastics. Compare that to the 14 period RSI when, yes, it went down from the upper point to the midpoint, but not nearly as sharply as the stochastic readings did. It didn't go down from above the top to below the bottom. It went from right at the top to the middle. Okay. Now during the earnings miss, the RSI went from the middle or around the middle to under the oversold reading. Whereas the slow and stochastic, uh, slow and fast stochastics just pretty much stayed where they were because they were already about as low as they can go. 
So we can already see that the slow and fast stochastics are jerkier or more reactive than the RSI, at least in this case. And I've noticed this to be true pretty consistently. So let's take a look at when Apple had a nice recovery. It didn't recover all the way, but it recovered most of the loss, at least from the earnings report or at least part of the loss from the earnings report. And we can see that during this run up here, the stochastics, both the slow and the fast, went from deeply oversold to deeply overbought, you know, way below the bottom to way, way above the top here. And again, the fast stochastics did this a little more quickly or more sharply than the slow stochastics did. Whereas the RSI went from heavily oversold to somewhat above the midpoint, but not nearly as high as the stochastics did. So again, less extreme, less jerky, less reactive. And so as you can see, you're getting fewer overbought and oversold readings on the RSI compared to the stochastics. Let's go down, or let's go over here. This was an earnings beat. You had a downtrend, but boom, earnings beat. So it went up quickly. And you'll notice the slow stochastics went from around the midpoint right directly to the overbought range. The fast stochastics, which are even more, even more jerky than the slow stochastics, uh, went from way down here all the way up to an even higher over bought reading very quickly. Compare that, <clears throat> compare that to RSI, which went from around the midpoint to barely touching the overbought level. It didn't even pierce it. It just touched it. Unlike the stochastics, which went quite a bit above the overbought level here. So again, you're getting fewer or less often uh, readings of overbought and oversold on the RSI compared to the fast and slow stochastics. In my opinion, the stochastics compared to the RSI, because they're getting more frequent overbought and oversold readings, you might get some false signals compared to the RSI, which I think would get fewer false signals, in my opinion. As you can see from the example of the Apple daily chart, RSI is less jerky or reactive than stochastics, and therefore gives fewer overbought and oversold signals. I typically prefer to trade less often rather than more often. So RSI fits my trading style better. However, stochastics certainly might be a better fit for your particular trading style. And that's especially true if you prefer to get more frequent overbought and oversold signals. Here's the takeaway. Stochastics and RSI can both be useful tools in determining overbought and oversold price levels. You can choose one or both, depending on your individual trading preferences. And if you'd like more help with technical indicators or just finance in general, stocks, options, trading, and investing, well, I can help, I can help you for sure. Feel free to contact me. My email address is davidmodell.com at gmail.com. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you soon.